Hey, what's up guys? John here. Mexico has just elected its first ever female president. Voters in Mexico are going to the polls today and they are set to make history. Electing its first female president. And she has some massive goals. She wants to electrify the entire country. She wants to bring forward a completely different food system. She wants to change transportation and energy. She wants to basically change everything that is Mexico. And the more you look into her goals, the more you realize these goals are perfectly aligned with America and perfectly aligned with Canada. And you'll realize that all three of these nations are locking arms together to bring forward this vision of restructuring everything. And that's what we're walking into right now. We're walking into something really, really big. She is a climate scientist with a vision. Claudia Sheinbaum, a climate scientist, will also be the first Mexican president. That this vision, I believe, is gonna be seen through. Que fomente el bienestar social y el desarrollo regional, garantizando siempre el respeto al medio ambiente. And now you need to get ready for it because many people have thought about moving to Mexico or have moved to Mexico thinking, Mexico is this perfect, euphoric-like place. I can go there, live on the beach, I can eat fish tacos and shrimp tacos, I can get a housekeeper, I can get a beautiful place, and I'll be all in for four grand a month. Where am I doing that in America? A lot of people have that thought. Well, now that's gonna change, and a lot of people thinking that Mexico was gonna be that immune place from all this, they're gonna be looking at this completely differently. In this video, I'm gonna break it down, I'm gonna give you the facts and show you why I believe that all these nations, many of these nations are going to be moving forward you know, over the next couple of years together. And a lot of us need to get ready for it. Please hit the like button, hit the like button, YouTube will share this content, educate more people about what's going on in the global economy. Today's video is sponsored by Hertz Energy. More on that in just a little bit. Take a look at this. So Mexico elects Claudia Scheinbaum as the country's first ever female president. And she is a climate scientist. She's secured enough votes to become Latin America's country's first ever female president. And she was you know, right here at the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate, and she worked as a contributing author. So she, uh, she is aggressive and ambitious in her goals. As Steinbaum, Scheinbaum courted votes across the country of 127 million grappling with drought, heat wave, and smog, she promised to invest nearly 14 billion in clean energy and boost electric buses and trains. We have to speed up the promotion of renewable energies, she told a group of Mexican businessmen in April. That was five hours ago, right? 14 billion, and this just happened. So you can imagine where this is gonna be going. She says here that Scheinbaum, an energy engineer who worked unpaid on two major reports issued by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate, will take control of the world's 14th biggest economy, December 1st, until this famous date. And a lot of people have heard of this date, and uh, there's a lot of predictions about this date. Well, she's saying, forget that date, we're having goals all the way until 2050. So she says, we have to speed up the promotion of renewable energies. She told a group of Mexican businessmen in April, we are working on a national energy plan, not only to 2030, but 2050. Now, I look at things like 2008. A lot of people thought 2008 was, it was a massive crash. It was like a 1929 event. I look at 2008 and say, okay, the average home back in 2008 was about $246,000 nationally. In some neighborhoods, they dropped 30, 40%, right? It's pretty substantial, maybe even 50% in some. And so when you look at this, you're like, okay, that was you know really big correction, a big crash, right, in real estate. But when you look at where we're going now, it's not just electrifying all homes. It's not just you know transportation. It's not just energy. It's not just food. It's everything. Every single industry is going to be going through like a 2008 level event. And so when you add all this up with record high debt, it's going to be a problem, right? For a lot of people, the top five percent, it's not going to be a problem. But for the bottom 95 percent, I think it could be a problem. And especially when you look at a place like Mexico, Hertz Energy presents a compelling investment opportunity in the rapidly growing sectors of lithium and uranium. The stock appears to be extremely undervalued. Backed by strong fundamentals and global green energy trends backed by green energy mandates. The U.S. is the largest consumer of nuclear energy for residential heating and electricity. Approximately 60 million Americans rely solely on nuclear energy for these needs. 
President Joe Biden's new policies aim to phase out fossil fuel dependent appliances and gas stoves. These policies also mandate that new homes to be built without the need for fossil fuels. This went into law on May 28th, just a few days ago. This is happening at the same time we shift a significant percent of our vehicles fully electric in the next five years. This movement is evidenced by all car manufacturers moving towards fully electric models. As the US enforces tariffs and trade restrictions on countries like China and Russia, including a recent ban on Russian uranium. The focus is shifting towards North American resources. This geopolitical climate creates an urgent need to explore and develop local mineral resources. Larry Fink, the founder of BlackRock, highlighted the ongoing and tectonic shift towards sustainable investments. To his 2022 letter to shareholders, he emphasized that sustainable and scalable innovators will drive future growth. This perspective underscores the importance of companies like Hertz Energy in the green energy landscape. Uranium is one of the cleanest energy sources, producing minimal emissions. Advances in Rector technology promises further improvements. The White House has recently embraced nuclear energy, marking the most significant push for clean atomic power in five decades. Lithium supply and demand dynamics are straightforward. Demand is skyrocketing while supply remains restricted. The imbalance underscores the strategic importance of North American lithium assets. Hertz Energy holds promising assets, including the Kaminko Uranium Project, the ACDC and Snake Lithium Project in James Bay, the Lucky Mika Lithium Project, and the Patriota Lithium Project in Brazil. A competitor stock recently surged 5,000% following a major discovery in James Bay, Canada, highlighting the region's potential. The CEO of Hertz Energy, Cal Malhi, was a former police officer turned venture capitalist. He has a former track record of commercializing innovative technologies. He previously led ventures to significant market caps, including an $800 million company and a $40 million company in cannabis breathalyzer technology. Malhi's latest venture includes a partnership with Penn State University to develop a patent pending lithium extraction technology. This breakthrough could dramatically reduce energy required to extract lithium from spotamine lowering the required temperatures from 1100 Celsius to 250 Celsius. This innovation could significantly cut cost and energy consumption, positioning Hertz Energy as a game changer in the lithium industry. Hertz Energy's diversified portfolio includes properties in Nunavut and Quebec, Canada, Arizona, here in America, and in Brazil. The strategic partnership with Penn State University further strengthens Hertz Energy with cutting edge lithium extraction technology. With strong leadership, innovative technology, and valuable assets, Hertz Energy, stock ticker HZLIF, is poised to capitalize on the green energy transition. Investing in Hertz Energy offers exposure to the critical lithium and uranium markets, essential for the future of sustainable energy. For further details, review the sources and recent developments in the sector to make an informed investment decision. Click the link in the description below to get started today. Now, people in Mexico, a lot of them don't make that much money. I mean, a lot of people aren't gonna be able to say, oh yeah, another 100 grand, I'll electrify my home. A lot of people make 10 grand a year in Mexico, and they're happier, by the way, than most people in America that are making 100,000 a month. A lot of people in Mexico, they're eating healthy, they have their families intact, they're, you know, they're happier than, you know, they could be, right, or anywhere else. I, at least all my experience, whenever I go to Mexico, I see more people smiling on the street in Mexico than I ever do in any American city. And so when you look at what she's saying, this is 2019, so kind of just to show you how everything I believe is gonna be moving in this direction in Mexico. She says that, you know, the same same exact policies that are happening, you know, in San Francisco and Los Angeles and New York City, you know, whether you agree or disagree with it, it just kind of shows that the same, the same thought process is gonna be going into Mexico. And so she says here that uh, she faces a very difficult security and economic situation, climate, water shortages, heat waves. She had, it's gonna be a very difficult country. She's going to lead. 
Well, look at this. Let's look at Canada and we can kind of see how this is all going to go because this is all happening together. So March 30th, Trudeau's climate plan, right? And what he is saying here is that the essentially need a, to support this new tax, right? Um, that they're going to be supporting this new tax and it's all set for the same exact date, the same date that Claudia has. So what I believe is going to be happening here is we're going to see it all unroll together. Every single country, same, same targets for electrifying homes, same targets for everything. And so look at this. Residential electrification can save American households $96 billion through reduced energy costs if lower income households electrify alongside higher income ones. So this is going to be about, it's easy, this is how they're going to pitch this. It's going to be about, you know, the higher end neighborhoods, they need to, you know, they need to work together. Like lower income neighborhoods, they all, it, it has to be about combating inequality, inequity, and bringing forward a safer and healthier world. This is, this is how it's going to go down. Um, what they said here, this is March 5th. It says, this investment in the Inflation Reduction Act, the largest ever investment in climate, is a critical step towards the goal of electrifying all homes in the United States with clean energy sources and advances the Biden-Harris administration's work to reach carbon pollution-free electricity in the next basically 10 and a half years, right? All homes in America. So you think about this. If Canada is moving forward on that tax and they're moving forward on a lot of the same policies and America is moving forward on all of these new policies and this president was just elected and she has already vowed to spend $14 billion in clean energy and boost electric buses and trains, you can see how fast this train is going to be moving. Now, what I believe is going to happen is I believe a lot of key markets, a lot of key areas in Mexico are going to get bought up by investors. I believe we're going to start to see a lot of consolidation of wealth and property and land unfold in Mexico over the next five years. Like to the likes of which we've never before seen. It's going to get crazy. I mean, even look at what happened here on March 5th. This is a very small uh, tribal community. And Biden-Harris administration says, here's $72 million. Uh, you know, this is to help you electrify these properties. This investment from the Inflation Reduction Act, the largest ever investment in climate, the critical step towards the goal of electrifying all homes in this 2020 or 2035, right? And so when you see this, the first round of funding of the Office of Indian Affairs, tribal electrification program will provide financial and technical assistance to 21 tribes to connect homes to transmission and distribution that is powered by clean energy, provide electricity to unsighted tribal homes through zero emission energy systems, transition electrified tribal homes to zero emissions energy systems, and support associated home repairs and retrofitting necessary to install the zero emission energy systems. The program will support clean energy and workforce development opportunities in Indiana, Indian country. So you see this, where this is all going to be going. Then. You see this, what I think is very, very fascinating. Click on our cities, and it shows you that already some of these cities have already signed on. And some of these cities, such as Guadalajara and Mexico City, have already signed on to this pledge. And this is before the new president stepped forward. So you know a lot more cities are going to pop in, and it's going to start to look more like America. It's going to start looking like a, you know, a lot of these other countries, Canada up here, right? So you see Vancouver, you, know, you can see Montreal and Toronto. Well. Look at what this is actually going to look like. I find this very fascinating because you click on food systems and they say that our global food system is broken. One third of food is wasted, yet many people around the world suffer from food insecurity. Food is among the largest drivers of the global climate crisis. Food insecurity is one of the biggest impacts of this. Most of the world's food is consumed in urban areas, giving cities the power to deliver transformative change. They work with cities to develop healthy, equitable, and accessible food systems that can also reduce food loss and waste. And they have the same target. So I think it'll be very interesting when you look also at electrifying the buildings, because this is all going to likely be the same type of target. They say that buildings that we live in and work in cause nearly 60% emissions on average, and up to 80% in some cities, from energy used to power, heat, or cool them, construction material in the building sector are going to be responsible for almost a third of global resource consumption. The need for buildings and infrastructure will only intensify. By next year, we'll need to build a billion new homes. Now, of course, that's not going to happen, but they set these huge targets and then they retract the targets and then we all start moving in that direction. We've seen this year after year. 
As about 6% of buildings that will exist in 2050 haven't been built yet. That means constructing a city the size of Stockholm or Milan every week until 2050, or a city the size of Singapore or New York every month. They say that they're going to be implementing and enforcing building energy regulations and mandatory performance standards for existing buildings. So, think about this. Enforcing building energy regulations, including measures to reduce embodied emissions, buildings, benchmarking, whole life. So you see incentivizing and implementing citywide actions towards this. So you see what's happening in tribal areas, see what's happening in America, see what's going on in Canada. And now with this new president, you can just imagine what Mexico is going to look like, the amount of change that's going to be happening inside of Mexico. Now, I do believe that we're going to see every industry get overhauled over the next couple of years, every single industry. Some things are going to do extremely well. Some industries are going to do very, very, very well on this. Most are not, right? Most are going to think, oh, this will never happen, John. It's not going to happen. Look, it's already law. They're already signing on to all these places. It's already happened. All these countries are already working together to move this in. So people need to get ready for it. I believe we're going to see a lot of investors looking at these key markets and saying, you know what? I'm going to be scooping up houses here. I'm going to buy houses here. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to buy mom and pop hotels here. I'm going to electrify certain properties. A lot of investors are going to start, you're going to see private equity companies stepping in, being built out, saying, you know what? We're going to specialize in electrifying properties. That's our specialty. We're going to be going in key high risk markets and buying these key properties and electrifying all of these homes. What do you think about this entire situation? I think we're walking into the greatest wealth transfer ever. When you change energy, when you change how properties get heat and electricity, you change all this, you change everything. And the business or the industry that's positioned to capitalize on this is gonna do extremely, extremely well. What do you think about this entire situation? What do you think this is gonna do with the local real estate markets, the transportation to food systems? What do you think it's gonna to do to Mexico? Let's have a conversation about this below in the comment section. And today's video is sponsored by Hertz Energy. For more information, click the link in the description just below this video. Catch you next video.